I was browsing the WoW Noob subreddit and came across this one. It says Raid Exploration. It's marked as classic, but I think it applies. There's there's a couple of applications for this. But I just kind of want to want to talk about it a little bit this morning. It says here, I'm quite the novice when it comes to MMORPGs, as I usually just play RPGs. The idea of getting a large group together to tackle large difficulties sounds really fun to me. However, every time I see a post up uh, regarding raid preparation, there seems to be this huge need for you to be super prepared in all regards. I understand that you, of course, need proper level and gear and coordination with your guild, but there seems to be this requirement that you need to know the raid's mechanics inside and out before even attempting it for the first time. If this is true, then there is, is there any sense of discovery in raids? Now, he's asking about Classic here, and that's why, you know, to specifically answer that question. He says, I've always enjoyed finding out the game in-game rather than via wiki pages, but I've gotten this sense of taboo from the community. That's when a few players die because you only know nine-tenths of a boss mechanics, um, you then ruin their parse and the time to complete the raid, um, and then everybody gets pissed off and you should just basically leave. So he says, is this actually the case, or have I been misled? And I'm going to say a couple of... I want to... I wanna, there's, there's a couple of things I want to talk about here. Probably more. I'll probably ramble. Let me get comfortable. Sit back here. Um, Valdraken in the background. It works for me. So in regards to WoW Classic, um, I can say from experience, um, because we put together in Wrath of the Lich King, and some of you remember this, and there's a playlist here on my channel. You can go back and see this. Um, I left it up. We um, started off with like, uh, I think about 75, 80 people who were gung-ho and ready to go for uh, Wrath Classic. And um, myself, and it was it was spearheaded by myself and my brother. Essentially, my brother came to me with the idea. He said, I've always wanted to play Warcraft. You and I have tried a few times. This is coming up. Do you want to do this? I said, yes. Other people got interested. Um, and then that grew from there. And, and that was the last of the progression guilds we did. And we... we did a bunch of those from like EverQuest 1, EverQuest 2, Star Wars Republic, Lord of the Rings Online, over the course of like eight, nine, maybe nine years, eight or nine years. Anyway, um, that time around, we went into it, us as being World of Warcraft newbies, and along with a handful of other people who were newbies, essentially. I, now, we had played, uh, I had played Classic when it launched, and my brother had dabbled in retail a little bit. We just never, never seen the content, though. So, we came in... I want to say like three or four months before um, Wrath of Lich King was coming out and we got together, it was my brother and I with Maduros and some other people and we got together and we started doing the Burning Crusade content because we had never seen that before. Now Maduros had, so he had, he was an encyclopedia and everything so shout out to Maduros because he's, he's our main tank right now and, and the encyclopedia of... Uh, of um, of knowledge for a lot of people for us in the guild so it's been very he's been a pretty cool person to have around but um we went through that experience and then as we were forming everything the intent was and this was made clear to everybody in the guild that we wanted to do the raids from the perspective of we've never done them before we don't want to read we don't want to read wikis we don't want to no strategies before again. We actually want to raid this content in uh, Wrath of Lich King as if we're doing it for the first time because we have we are doing it for the first time. So you know the intent was we're going to do that, and then other people joined around us, many of whom, I would say the majority of whom, had done the content before when it had originally launched, and um, they were very nostalgic about it and wanted to come on board. And then what very quickly happened as soon as we got to the launch of Wrath of Lich King, and we got, I would say about a month in we suddenly had a group of people who wanted to go racing through raid content and everything because they'd already done it 10 years ago or whatever and so they didn't they weren't taking their time with it they were just like oh i remember this quest line this is the coolest quest chain ever and they beelined their way through and were already max level in you know a few weeks in some cases people did it in you know even in our guild you know did it within like a couple of weeks whereas we were taking it very slowly i mean we were getting up at like four o'clock in the morning to play a couple of hours almost every single morning and we were just almost daily we were playing i put almost all of those episodes up into a playlist around um classic that was before i was monetized uh no that's not true i was monetized by then i think i would have to go back and check the timeline um in any case, um, yeah, I was monetized by then. I was totally monetized by then because we were streaming some of those sessions. So, 
yeah. Anyway, that, but that was at the very beginning when I first started getting monetized on YouTube and, and doing a bunch of content. And um, we went through that, and it was a great experience. But that fracture of people who were like, go, 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 go. And then we also had within that same group was people who were getting frustrated when we did get to rating um, with the fact that we were taking a multiple attempts to do a boss when they were like, we will, why are you, this sucks. You guys don't know the mechanics. I'm not having fun. I already know the mechanics. I don't, I'm not here to, you know, watch you guys figure it out. You just read a fucking guide already, right? L like literally was what we got told. Just literally read a guide already. And it was like, it was very frustrating to want to do it from that place of discovery uh, but n other people not being willing to do that because they'd already seen the content before. And there's a there's a fracture there that happens. And that definitely happened with us. And, you know, a chunk of people decided that they were going to go off and do their own thing. And kudos to them for doing whatever they want to do. But at the same time, it was like, I'm not going to sacrifice my enjoyment, you know. But, you know, I don't want to go read wikis. Like, I want to figure it out in-game. So, there are occasions when it's it's great to look at what other people are doing and use that to help you figure out but like a lot of the times with boss mobs we're doing it slightly different with emerald or soul because um, those are pretty complicated fights and so you know we're reading the adventure journal while also researching things online because one of the things that modern retail retail world of warcraft does is it gives you all the strategies to research on your own how to do the fights but Classic didn't have that, so you had to figure it out. And so people got impatient with, you know, people wanting to figure it out. So this is a very interesting um, question, because this person literally ran into the same thing that we ran into, which is people expect you to already know nine-tenths of the mechanics when it comes to Classic content. And if you don't, you're a noob and an idiot, and you're ruining the parser, and you're ruining the time it takes to complete. Why aren't we doing this in 15 minutes? It shouldn't be taking two hours. Like, there's all of that stuff that goes with the sweaty group of people. And that's why, you know, I'm, I'm, it was an interesting case because I had never seen that before. We had done, we had done EverQuest 1 like five or six times as a community. We had done EverQuest 2 three times as a community. We had done Lord of the Rings Online three times with the community. And I think we did um, Star Wars Red Republic one time with the community and ESO one time with the community. And we had never seen that until we got to World of Warcraft. It was a very interesting case study in the way a certain group of people, I've only ever met them in World of Warcraft. It was very, very interesting. Quick commercial break, everyone, to celebrate and give thanks to all of these amazing people who keep me on the air full time. Really appreciate the support. All you got to do is join as a member. You get access to private videos. You can also do super thanks on any upload or super chats and stickers on any live stream or premiere you see. And beyond that, don't forget we're multi-streaming over on Twitch now, so you can support over there as well. Thanks so much to everybody. Let's get back to the video at hand. So the way we've been doing it now, and you can go watch the videos um, that we've been putting out here on my channel. Um, you know, everybody's coming at this from the perspective of it's it's story first. So many of the people who are in the guild have never done Dragonflight before. Or they've done Dragonflight storyline content. And maybe they've dabbled in LFR or they've been in a guild that did a couple of raids but didn't finish all the way. Um, I think this is a first time for many people to see this content all the way through to current. And it's been a very, very cool experience to come at it from the angle of retail versus the classic experience. Because what this person is talking about, the sense of discovery, I just, I don't think you're ever going to find that in the WoW classic experience. Because um, I really have my character is like totally sitting down right now, so we'll get him standing back up again. Um, I don't think you're ever going to find it in the classic environment because the in-game tools didn't exist and everything else. So the adventure guide is one of the coolest things ever. Like World of Warcraft has done an incredible job with this tool right here. This um, the, the, the suggested content, the dungeons and raids so we can go into Amidrasil as an example and we can pick a boss like we we were doing smolder on uh, last night we got a video up on that one by the way which is a fun video um, 
because we, we finally hit a brick wall and we're like finally had a boss that we couldn't get through on a single night and that was the first time that it happened and it was a really cool experience because everyone and we had like 28 people like maybe 20 I don't know actually no 26 28 people there at the raid so we were you know we had a good size turnout and um everybody was just cool we were having fun even though we were hitting our head against the wall but you can look at this boss and you can see through all these things he does right and you get an explanation of each one of these things and here's the thing it breaks it down for damage dealers healers and tanks so I can expand this if I want to right and I can go down through here and depending on what class I'm playing whether I'm a damage dealer, a healer, or a tank, it's going to explain these tactics in detail. And so you can R&D things without ever seeing the fight if you choose to. That's the sense of discovery that's out there right now. And if you find yourself beating your head against the brick wall, that's okay because there exist online things like guides that other people have done. Um, we... Um, we definitely use guides on, on some of the harder fights that we've done. Shout out to Hazel, by the way. Her videos are freaking amazing. Like, I absolutely love those guides. They have definitely come in handy for us as we've as we've worked and progressed at getting better at these at these raids. But I will say, even though we, we hit our head against Smolderon last night, the previous week we literally cleared every boss up to him in like an hour and a half session. So we've gotten pretty good because we'd already done these before and our it was our second time through some of these, right? So it was like, second time Narut, no problem. Second time Agir the Cruel, no problem. We first timed him every time on the second time through. So it was really cool to have done that and then we got up to Smolderon and, and, and saw him and it was like, oh, this is actually a, a step up in difficulty and had a great time doing that so I think that the idea of discovery in raids is it's possible but not in classic I don't think it's possible in classic because um, I know that we experienced it and I know that um, definitely in terms of what this person experienced that they were talking about in the in the WoW well Noob subreddit, I think that that's an experience that if you go read through the comments, like it's definitely a bunch of other people have had that experience. And the the responses are generally along the lines of these are 20 year old raids, so you're dealing with people who did this a ton of times over then, and they come back for nostalgic reasons, and that is a different mindset than someone who's never done it before. That's just literally it's a it's a psychological difference that you just can't you can't um, ignore because people who are nostalgic for something are not playing it the same way that people who are doing it for the first time do it because I play a lot of stuff for the first time in World of Warcraft and I can tell you like I've had multiple people talk to me because I've been taking each alt through the um, individual uh, expansions that I've never seen through, through time walking campaigns so I did Cataclysm uh, um, and then I'm and then I'm doing uh, Mr. Pandaria right now, and I got comments during Cataclysm, and I've gotten comments during the Pandaria run with my different alts. That um, a lot of people are like, "Oh, I remember this being so cool back then," um, and they have nostalgia for it, but they don't want to ever necessarily go back and do that. Now, some people watch and have gotten inspired, and they've gone back and done the same, um, which is awesome to see. Um, but there's, I've been also seeing a surprising amount of people, it's not huge numbers, but I would say almost every single video I produce, I get a comment or two from someone who's also never seen whatever content I happen to be doing at the time. And they're like, oh, I should totally do this like you're doing with an alt. And they've gone out and done it and they've, they've discovered something about World of Warcraft that they never knew before. So I think that's something that's been very advantageous to me. Uh, or for me, I should say, is coming into World of Warcraft retail 20 years after it launched um, and playing the retail version of the game means I have 20 years of discoverability ahead of me. And that's been one of the coolest things to ever see. Um, so it was a really cool, um, really cool um, conversation starting point. I think that um, one of the things that drives me and it drives Lysander and it drives... You know, everybody who's with us, you know, we've got a ton of people who have played it before, like 
Kel and Maduros have definitely, you know, played a lot before, but they're having fun alongside everybody. And then we've got people who have never done it before and they're having fun alongside everybody else. I mean, it's just, it's been a great blend of, of people who just want to see the story. And I, I think that genuinely, I genuinely think that if you want this game to be a game of discoverability, it can be. Um, but it's definitely easier in the retail experience because classic is just clouded by that nostalgic stuff um, and a lot of people can't let go of that. So you'll have a better time finding that in the modern game because so much stuff here is single player RPG that you can do it on your own without the pressure of other people. They've added follower dungeons to Dragonflight so you can go out and do additional content like dungeon content with a party of NPCs that can help you so that you can get the story out of it. Like. It is a story-heavy game these days, and I, for me, I just like to sit here and immerse myself in these sessions as I'm playing through, and I love voice acting, and I love cutscenes, and I've loved that modern retail ex experience because I'm getting to discover the game for the first time. And it doesn't matter if we're talking Dragonflight, which I've gone through multiple times now with different characters, and we're slowly working our way through. We're on the last raid. You know, we've, we've managed, we started playing together right after BlizzCon and started our first raid in December and have steadily worked our way through the Dragonflight content. We did the first raid, we did the second raid, all those videos are up here on YouTube for want to see. We've done the third raid, we've done all the bosses up to Smolder on now. We've got him and two more left, so the month of March is going to be us working our way through those last challenging boss mobs and and seeing them for the first time. And if we've gotten comments, I've definitely had some trolly comments from um, some of the sweaty people who've come onto some of the videos and goes, oh my god, this hurts so bad watching people suck like this. And it's just like, I really could care less. So um, feel free to be snarky because we're having fun. And that's the best part about playing World of Warcraft is you can play how you want to play. And if you drown out the bullshit, you drown out all those people who don't match up with you and your playstyle, but find people who do fit your playstyle, you're going to find enjoyment. That's my uh, recruitment message. <laughs> we are on Moonkin, if you want to come join us. We raid every Saturday night at 8 p.m. Central. Raid, video raid videos are up for those of you who want to watch. I also stream World of Warcraft generally on Wednesday nights and Saturday mornings. Occasionally throughout the week, I will also do other World of Warcraft streams. But I do play a lot of different games... And I'm multi-stream here and on Twitch. You can check out all the other playlists here on the channel. And you can also join the Discord if you want. That's how you can reach out to find more information about the guild if you want to get an invite. Hopefully we'll see you in the next one. Don't forget there's a Patreon if you want to support my work as a sci-fi and fantasy author. There's a link below to my latest fantasy book. See you guys next time. Stay safe. Happy gaming.